I've been working full time in the field of running technique for quite a few years now and I've had a lot of education and taking courses on the subject of course. But probably the best education I had on the subject comes from using my 3D cameras for many years to analyze how runners move, how different forces affect the joints, how much energy is used per meter they run and above all what happens when I suggest adjustments to how runners run? Since I've been using these cameras and the motion metrics software almost daily since 2014 and have probably done more than 10,000 tests, I have accumulated a lot of knowledge that I've never heard of but in any course or read in a book or heard in a lecture. One such thing is that many runners have relatively large lateral forces that both causes them to leak energy laterally and that the large lateral forces in for instance knees and hips can cause pain and overload injuries. There can be several different reasons why they have these unnecessarily large lateral forces but for the majority it's mainly from how wide they put their feet down which often comes from how they move their hands and what happens around the hip and how they move the shoulders. Especially the thing with the shoulders is very very common. If I then instruct them to how to find a different way to move their shoulders mostly by relaxation, sometimes it's like 30 to 50 percent of the lateral forces in a knee can disappear at once from one second to the next. And this is just one of those things that I've seen many many times and that I have never seen in a book on biomechanics. Another thing I've seen over the years is the link between how much they lean their body forward and the contact time. Of course this does not all apply to all runners. If you are an elite runner it's likely that other things apply to you. But for a powerful majority, powerful majority of the recreational runners I meet, the link between the leaning and contact time works like this. Having your foot on the ground for as short time as possible, so-called short ground contact time, is good when you run. I have made a separate video about this but the principle is that the shorter time the foot is on the ground the more energy return you will get from the body's elastic structures, the so-called stretch shortening cycle. Strength and elasticity and stiffness in the body is important for the contact time. It is also very important where you land in relation to your center of mass. If you land further in front of your center of mass you will generally have a longer contact time. It takes longer time to move the foot from over here to over there. Instead of landing more straight under the center of mass. You don't land straight under your center of mass. I made a video about that as well but you know what I mean. And most recreational runners land too much in front of their center of mass. I will now show you what it looks like for one of the runners that I helped. I know that showing what it looks like for one single runner would be anecdotal evidence but I see this phenomenon almost daily and often several times a day. Here are the test results from the runner when he did two consecutive tests. In both tests he has landed exactly at the same distance in front of the center of mass, 115 millimeters. In the first test, the large light arrow, the leaning of the body was 11 degrees forward and this resulted in a contact time of 256 milliseconds and an energy return of 27.7 percent. And remember, the shorter contact time and the more energy return the better. When the runner in test 2 the smaller darker arrows straightened up the body and had a leaning about 4.7 degrees instead of the 11 the landing in relation to the center of mass was still 115 millimeters. Exactly the same as in the first test. 
but the contact time dropped from 256 milliseconds to 238 and the energy return increased from 27.7 to 34.7 percent making the runner much more energy efficient you might think that this is not strange at all but perfectly logical but since I often hear runners say that they try to lean more forward to land more under their body, more under the center of mass and thereby shorten their ground contact time, I thought I just wanted to show you how it actually works for a majority of the runners I meet. And this is not free speculation on my part, but measurable results I see almost every day. And in addition, it is the case that many runners, especially men, lean far too much forward, just like the guy in the example. I just wanted now to show you what it can often look like when you test it all and that it may be a good idea for you to film yourself from the side to see how much you lean forward. But please note, I want to remind you that just as with everything else, it can work differently for different runners, which means that some people can get a shorter contact time by leaning a little bit more than this guy did in his second test. And it's generally not good at all if you're too upright or leaning backwards. If you are sufficiently strong around the hip, the glutes, the core, you may benefit from a slightly greater leaning than others. So if you're not a member of a national team, you might want to check out how much you're leaning forward so it's not too much and try to adjust the angle back and forth to see what happens. Or you can choose to lean forward at least 15 degrees or more. I don't care. Everyone can run as they please. I'm just telling you what it looks like for a vast majority of the runners I meet when adjusting and measuring their leaning and their contact time. I truly hope you liked that video and if you did please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button. And feel free to check out all the other content I have here on my channel. And maybe you are also interested in my online course. You'll find it at fredrikzillen.com.